Welcome to Vacuum Wars and to our review of the latest robot vacuum from Roborock, the S6 Max V with artificial intelligence. I spent this week putting it through all kinds of tests and this video will be the results of those tests and my review. So links in the description and let's get started. I'm a big fan of Roborock robot vacuums and have owned just about every one they've put out so far, but the S6 Max V is the first with artificial intelligence, which is a new trend in the robot vacuum industry that I really like. I'll talk more about the new AI feature features in a minute, but first I should say that in many ways the S6 Max V is very similar to some of the latest generation Roborocks like the S5 Max and the original S6. For example, it has the same basic design as most Roborocks in terms of the way that it picks up debris, and that's a really good thing as I do think that Roborocks are one of the best out there in terms of their most basic job, which is picking stuff up off of hard floors and carpets. Whether that's heavy, fine debris like sand or large debris, they don't scatter a lot of debris with their side brushes, and in general, they have a nice, clean pickup, not usually requiring multiple passes to get all of the debris. It does have more stated suction power than most Roborocks at 2,500 pascals, up from 2,000 pascals, which we saw on the original S6. It also has more rated power in terms of watts than both the S5 Max and the S6, and in our airflow tests, it had higher airflow than the S6 as well. So it was no surprise that it also did better than the older S6 with a deep, clean test where I embed sand into medium pile carpet and weigh the dust bins after a five minute run. It had the same anti-tangle brush that all the newer Roborock models have, which I found to be better than average, but still not perfect at resisting hair tangles. For example, I saw no tangles with one gram of five inch hair, but it averaged about 20% of the hair tangled with seven inch hair. So well above average, but still not perfect. It had about the same fairly large dust bin as the S5 Max and S6, and the exact same 5200 milliamp battery, which is about as big as they get on robot vacuums. Roborock says that the S5 Max V can get 180 minutes on low power instead of the 150 minutes on the previous premium Roborocks, but that's probably just a function of them dialing back the power input on low power for the S6 Max V. In any case, its battery life is also well above average. The S6 Max V does have the new mop design that we also saw with the S5 Max, which means that it has a separate 297 milliliter water tank in addition to the washable pad which attaches to that tank via a removable plate. The old style Roborock mopping systems like the old S6 had had the water tank as a part of the mopping pad plate. The main difference is that in addition to the new type of mopping system holding more water, the water is now electronically controlled instead of just gravity controlled, so you can use the app to change how much water is used when mopping. In our tests, I found that once the pad was soaked, it was as good or better than any mopping robot I've tested yet. I used to say that these robot mop combos could never be as good as the dedicated mopping robots, but with this new style, it's probably gonna make me change my mind about that. I still need to do a lot of tests with the other mopping bots to be sure, but I do know that this new mopping style on the S6 Max V and the S5 Max are way better than the mops on the older Roborocks. It also has no mop zones, which is a feature in the app where you draw little boxes on carpet or other areas that you don't want it to mop, and it saves that into the system in order to avoid those areas when mopping. And I think it takes these mopping bots to a whole new level in terms of their usefulness. All right, so let's talk about the navigation, the app features, and the AI, because all that is where the S6 Max V really sets itself apart, in my opinion. The S6 Max V, like most Roborocks, maps and navigates around the house using LiDAR, which is a spinning invisible laser, which very accurately maps the house and I find it to be really efficient, at least for navigation, and the S6 Max V also very quickly and efficiently mapped and cleaned the rooms in our tests. It has all the premium software features that in my opinion really add a lot of value, things like no-go lines, where you draw lines or boxes in the map in the app to keep the robot from going where you don't want it to go, something I now consider a must-have with any premium robot vacuum. It has a feature where you name rooms and you can send the robot to clean certain rooms and to avoid other rooms, and even to set power levels, schedules, and other preferences specific to each room. It also has multi-level mapping, which is where you can save multiple maps with multiple no-go zones and multiple no-mop zones for different levels of the house, which is a feature that Roborock owners have been waiting for for a long time. The S6 Max V has two stereoscopic cameras mounted on the front of the unit, which look for potential obstacles so that the robot can navigate around them. This is to solve the age-old problem of robot vacuums getting stuck on cords and other hazards left around the house, which up until very recently was just something that you had to deal with. These cameras work in tandem with its massive 
massively upgraded processor and of course the artificial intelligence to avoid obstacles. Basically it comes pre-programmed with a huge amount of common obstacles that it knows to avoid. Things like cords and shoes and socks and that kind of thing. And the AI will learn about other objects that are not already programmed in. I did a lot of tests with the AI and found that I really liked its avoidance of cords specifically, which is my main concern in terms of things that robot vacuums can get stuck on, and I thought that it was better than any other AI robots I've tested so far with cords right out of the box. I'm not sure if this was because of the two cameras instead of just one, which gives it depth perception, or simply because they pre-programmed a lot of types and sizes of cords in its database, but it avoided them completely and even when it wasn't perfectly lined up with the cord. With items that it didn't have have in its library, I found that it was kind of hit and miss. Some of them it got on the first try, others like with the cones it wasn't as good. Still a thousand times better than a non-AI robot, but even by the second run with the cones it wasn't nearly as good as it was with the cords. Roborock also said that they pre-programmed pet waste into the system, but in the test I did with the fake novelty pet waste version of it, it didn't seem to recognize it at all, so I'm not sure what the deal was there. My initial impression, and I still have a lot of tests to do here, is that the S6 Max-V is better than other AI bots with cord avoidance and other pre-programmed items, but it's slower to adapt to new items that it hasn't seen before. And it's hard to say without extensive testing how it will do over time, but I suspect based on its cord performance that it will be excellent once it learns the item. One thing I wanted to mention is that I know a lot of people get weirded out by the camera, but from what I can tell, these companies are going above and beyond trying to assure people that no data is being used or stored. In conclusion, I'd say that my take on the S6 Max-V is that it's a top-notch premium robot vacuum, but when you add all the app features and especially the AI, I expect this model to be one of the best sellers in the premium robot vacuum market for some time. Links in the description and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars to keep up with all the latest robot vacuum news and reviews. And thanks for watching.